Hi, I'm Chris Torch, Forage Extension Specialist at the Grain and Forage Center of Excellence in Princeton, and I'd like to welcome you to the 2020 Beef Bash. I'm going to be talking about winter feeding strategies for cow-calf herds, and I want to start out with what I think is one of our most economical winter feeding strategies, and that's stockpiled tall fescue. It's not new, but when we compare it to hay feeding, it costs about one half to one third as much to feed a cow and a calf per day versus feeding hay. And, and that's really important to realize, especially when prices are lower for beef cattle and we're a little bit tight on funds. So what I wanna do is kind of walk you through how to stockpile and then talk a little bit about how we're gonna utilize that stockpile the most efficiently. So the first thing that we do when we, when we wanna start out in stockpiles, we get a soil sample. And that's just a good general pasture management um, approach. And we wanna get about a four inch soil depth, so somewhere right in this range. And we wanna take about 20 cores per field. And then we'll send them into the soil lab and that'll tell us what we need to put on. If, if we're in the low range for phosphorus and potassium and our pH is low, we're gonna limit overall stockpile growth in the fall. So we wanna make sure that we've got our soil fertility optimized for stockpiling. So when we're ready to stockpile in the uh, fall, one of the management practices that we can do is come in and we'll clip a pasture to get rid of all the old dead material and any weeds that we have. And then we'll come back with a little bit of nitrogen fertilizer, anywhere from about 60 to 80 pounds of nitrogen per acre. One th important thing to remember about nitrogen is that not all of our nitrogen sources are equal. Our best nitrogen source for stockpiling um, is ammonium nitrate. We did some work a number of years ago that compared six different nitrogen sources, and we got our best stockpiling response to ammonium nitrate. Now, I realize that ammonium nitrate's not always available, so we have to use other sources. Our um, Kind of our medium response was urea. And uh, this is our all available in a research paper that was published in Forage and Grazing Lands uh, uh, several years ago. So after we apply our nitrogen fertilizer, so we clip our pastures, we apply our nitrogen fertilizer, and then we, we just take the animals out and we allow those pastures to rest. And uh, during the stockpiling period that usually starts in late August and goes through say late November, we're gonna accumulate grass growth. And we're gonna accumulate anywhere from 2,500 pounds of dry matter per acre up to 5,000 pounds, depending on the year, the amount of rainfall that we have and how much nitrogen fertilizer we put on that pasture. And after we accumulate that growth, um, we'll be ready to start to graze that starting somewhere in December, late November, early December. And we can utilize that growth for winter grazing all the way up into January and even into February in some years. And again, this costs about one third to one half as much as, as feeding hay. So it's a really great way and a really economical way to overwinter cattle. Now, one of the big advantages of stockpiling, not only the cost, but the forage quality is generally gonna be higher than most of the hay that we produce in Kentucky. Generally speaking, we'll have about a third more crude protein in stockpile versus most of the uh, hay that we produce in Kentucky. And we'll have about 25% more energy in stockpile than we would have in traditional hay. Why is that important? That's important because if we're feeding hay, a lot of times we're not gonna be meeting the nutritional requirements of a lactating brood cow. So we're gonna to have to supplement that with some type of supplement to bring that crude protein and also that energy up in that um, hay ration. And when we do that, we add additional expense to feeding that hay. So we have not only the cost of the hay, but we have the cost of that supplement. Stockpile, we can get away many times without any additional supplement, supplement feeding um, and still maintain body condition score and, and performance of uh, a lactating brood cow. All right, so now that we've got our stockpile and you can take a look over this field, we've got a nice uh, stockpile grass here. Now we need to talk about how do we most efficiently utilize it. And it's, it's really important that we do um, more than just turn animals into a large pasture. If we can ration this out to them by using what we call strip grazing, that's the best way to do it. And if we do that, we're gonna increase the number of grazing days we get per acre by about 40%. 
just by moving that fence twice a week. So if we come in every two and a half or three days and, and we move a temporary fence, we give those animals just enough for that period and we make them clean that forage up, that's going to increase the number of grazing days that we get per acre. There's not many things we can do in agriculture that's going to give us 40% more grazing days for the same price. So that's a pretty good management practice. And what we would do is we would start at a permanent fence and then we would string up a temporary fence uh, that would be electrified. We could either use a solar charger or we could use a hot wire on the outside of the permanent fence. And then we um, just give them enough forage for two to three days and we make them clean that forage up before we move them to a, a new section. We do this by starting at our water source. So for example, behind us we have a, um, a water and we would start there and we would give them just enough grass for that two to three day period and then we would move away from that water source. Now when we're grazing stockpile, our pastures are not actively regrowing so we don't need a back fence. And, um, and because of that, we can let them have access back over where they've already grazed to that water source. So it's a pretty simple way of increasing the amount of utilization we get from stockpiled tall fescue. All right, so even in the best stockpiling years, we're not gonna have probably enough stockpile to get us all the way through the winter months. So we're gonna have to feed some hay. So I think that's important to remember. And I wanna talk just a little bit now about how we sample hay and make sure that it's gonna meet the nutritional requirements of our cattle. All right, so we talked about stockpiling and, and stockpiling tall fescue for winter grazing is definitely the most economical feeding strategy for cow-calf operations in Kentucky. But we're always gonna need a little bit of hay in our feeding operation. And, and it's important to understand the quality of the hay that you're feeding. When you understand the quality of the hay you're feeding, you can supplement that hay so that you don't lose condition on your cows. So that's what we're gonna talk a little bit about is sampling hay. Now when we sample hay, we need to sample it by a lot. And a lot is one field and one harvest of hay. So say for example, field A cutting, first cutting would be one lot of hay. That needs to be sampled separately from say the second cutting from that field or the third cutting from that field or the first cutting from another field. So we sample by a lot, that's really important. And the second thing that's really important is that we get a good sample. And we do that by using a, a coring tool. So we don't want to just take a piece of hay and pull it out of a sample and send it in for, uh, pull it out of a bale and send it in for analysis. We want to actually take a bale core. And when we sample a lot, we'd like to get somewhere between 15 and 20 cores per hay lot. And then we composite those samples together mix them up and send the whole sample in for analysis. And I'll show you why we want to send the whole sample in in a minute after we core a few bales. So it's important when we're sampling hay that we use a, a probe to sample the hay with. For round bales, we want to sample the hay from the side. And for rectangular bales, large square bales or small square bales, we want to sample the bales from the end. Um, and again, we want to get 20 cores per lot and then submit all those cores to the lab and do not separate them into a smaller size sample. One of the important things to remember when we take a hay sample is that we want to submit the whole sample. So never subdivide it. You want the lab to grind the whole sample. And the reason why is if you look at the bottom, there's lots of little fine material at the bottom. When we separate it, we often grab just this coarse material and that really changes the quality analysis of this forage. So it's important to submit the whole sample and let them grind it into a homogeneous size and then they can subdivide it at the lab. Okay, so now we've got our sample taken and we send it into the lab and we got our results back. Now, the hay sampling is really worthless unless we actually do something with those results. So what we wanna do is we wanna use those results to help us manage our hay feeding program. And so what we get back, we'll get an estimate of energy and an estimate of crude protein and then a dry matter value for each one of those samples. And we can take that information and put it into what we call the UK cow forage supplement tool. And what this is, is, is a way that we can figure out how much of a supplement we may or may not need to feed with that particular lot of hay. So what, to use this, we need the dry matter of the hay um, we need the crude protein value, the neutral detergent fiber, 
That's an estimate of how much of that hay the animal can actually eat. And then we need an estimate of the energy and that's total digestible nutrients. And those will all be on your, your hay results when you get it back from the forage testing lab. And then the last thing we need to know is the stage of production of the, of the cow. Is she lactating with a calf or is she dry? If we have that information, we can put that into the supplement tool, which is available online. Um, or you can go to your extension office and your extension agent can help you with it. And I've got a couple examples here. So in this particular example, we've got a, a hay, hay lot that has 8.6% crude protein. That's a pretty, pretty low crude protein. And it's got an energy value or a TDN value of 53. So that's pretty low also. So this is definitely gonna need some supplement. When we put this information in our, our uh, hay supplementation tool, it spits out a, a number of different supplements and how much of each one of those supplements we would need to feed to meet the, the uh, requirements of a lactating brood cow. So for example, uh, if we were gonna feed soybean hulls, we'd have to feed the hay as much as it could eat, plus 10.6 pounds of soybean hulls per day for this particular hay lot. Now keep in mind, this hay was a pretty low, low quality hay. The second hay lot I just wanted to mention to you was, was a much higher quality hay lot. We had a, a crude protein concentration of over 12%, which should meet the crude protein requirements of a lactating brood cow. And then we had an energy or a TDN value of around 58.7%. Uh, the requirement would be around 60% for a lactating brood cow, so just a little bit low in energy. And as a result of the higher hay quality, instead of having to feed 10.6 pounds of soybean hulls, we would only need to feed around two pounds of soybean hulls for this particular lot of hay to, keep, uh, to supply the nutrients that a lactating brood cow needs.